Hello everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. The electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions are one of the fundamental and unique reactions of aromatic compounds. And in a typical organic chemistry course we cover five of them. So those are going to be the halogenation reaction, the nitration, the sulfonation, the Friedel-Crafts alkylation, and the Friedel-Crafts acylation reactions. Each of those reactions has a slightly different set of conditions, but they all have a very similar mechanism with only minor differences. So let's look at the generic mechanism for the electrophilic aromatic substitution. We're going to start by reacting the benzene molecule with some sort of electrophile. The nature of the electrophile is irrelevant for the moment. The only thing that we need to know about our electrophile is that it's a strong one. And the reason why we need a strong electrophile is because aromatic compounds are very stable. So if we want to attack the pi system and break that aromaticity, we'd need something very strong to do that. And once that happens, we're going to end up with a carbocation. This carbocation is resonance stabilized, so we can draw three resonance contributors for it. There will be a lot of resonance drawing in this topic. So if you are not feeling very comfortable with the resonance or need a refresher, make sure you review it now. We're going to be using resonance as one of our main tools of investigation here. So it's crucial you are capable of using that and be very comfortable with it. All right, so now back to my resonance stabilized carbocation. We occasionally call this intermediate a sigma complex. The sigma complex is an outdated term, but it was very popular in the middle of the last century, and you can still see it in some textbooks up to this date. So once we have our carbocation, we have a bit of a problem on our hands. You see, to make this carbocation, we had to break the aromatic ring, and thus we lost the stability that comes with it. And as I've mentioned in my previous tutorial on aromaticity, molecules will do whatever it takes to regain aromaticity or to maintain it. This intermediate is no exception, but what are we going to do to make our molecule aromatic again? Well, we can lose the proton from the position where we've attached our electrophile, this proton. And this proton is incredibly acidic. It is a proton on a carbocation, and we know that carbocations are wickedly acidic. Also, the removal of this proton restores aromaticity, so it will be a very thermodynamically favorable process if we were to get rid of it. So, some sort of a conjugate base, again, the nature of that base is irrelevant for the moment. So, that base will come and pull off the proton. And due to how acidic the proton is, we don't really need anything very basic. Essentially, anything with an electron pair will do. Even another aromatic ring by itself can do that. And here is an important thing I want to point out before we move any further. While this reaction might look like some sort of addition because we just added an electrophile to our molecule, it is not. If you pay close attention to what's been going on with our reagents, you can see that there was a hydrogen right over here on our molecule. And that hydrogen, in the course of the reaction, we replace that hydrogen with our electrophile. So, while we don't normally consider hydrogens as living groups, in this reaction it, essentially, plays a role of one by being replaced with the electrophile. Therefore, it is a substitution reaction, although it may not look like one, especially if we are writing the reaction using the skeletal structures without showing the implicit hydrogen atoms. Alright, now let's look at the actual electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions I've mentioned at the beginning of this video. And we'll start with the halogenation reaction. In the general scheme, we see that we need a halogen, I'll be using chlorine here, and another species, aluminum chloride. Aluminum chloride is the catalyst that we need to make a good electrophile. And as a catalyst, it's not going to be consumed in this reaction. So once we start working through the mechanism of this reaction, we'll have to make sure we regenerate that. And the first step in this reaction is going to be the formation of our electrophile. 
And while chlorine is electrophilic, it is not electrophilic enough to tackle the aromatic ring and disrupt aromaticity. So this is where the aluminum chloride comes in. Many metal halides are good Lewis acids, meaning they are good at accepting electrons. Aluminum chloride is an exceptional Lewis acid, so it will pull the chlorine towards itself to steal some of its electron density. This will yield a new complex between the chlorine molecule and aluminum. And because chlorine has to provide some of its electron density to make this bond, the new bond that we have between aluminum and chlorine over here, this makes chlorine very electrophilic because it is now electron depleted. Now, this new complex is going to be our electrophile. And in the next step, we are going to be doing our electrophilic attack. In this step, our newly made electrophile attacks the aromatic ring. Notice that in this attack, it's the chlorine atom on the edge of the molecule over here that's actually doing the attacking and not the one with the formal positive charge. So the attack goes from the aromatic ring on the edge chlorine and that breaks the bond between our chlorines. This attack results in the formation of our resonance stabilized carbocation intermediate, or the sigma complex if you like that name better. And finally, we're going to restore the aromaticity by removing the proton from our carbocationic intermediate. And as a conjugate base, we're going to use the leftover of our catalyst that now has an extra chlorine atom. That gives us the final product, chlorobenzene in this case, and the regenerated catalyst along with the HCl, which is the co-product. We don't really care about this part, and as a matter of fact, you're probably not even going to mention that when you are writing the mechanism, and likewise the catalyst will remember that the catalyst still exists and we regenerated that, but we are probably not going to be showing that in the uh, final mechanism for the test purposes or anything like that. So the next reaction in this series is going to be the nitration of aromatic compounds. In the general scheme, we can see that we have the main reagent, which is going to be our nitric acid over here, and we also have the sulfuric acid over here, which is a catalyst. And like in the previous case, the nitric acid is not electrophilic enough by itself and it cannot tackle the aromatic ring as is, so it needs a little help to become more electrophilic. And as sulfuric acid is a stronger acid than the nitric acid, the reaction starts by proton transfer from sulfuric acid to the oxygen of nitric acid. This forms a rather unstable protonated nitric acid, which quickly undergoes the leaving group dissociation, giving us the nitronium ion, which is going to be our electrophile. And as the nitronium ion is a strong electrophile, it will have no problems attacking the aromatic ring, making a resonance stabilized carbocation, just like we've seen in the previous case. I am not going to show the full Lewis structure here for the nitro group uh, for the sake of space, so I'll just leave it as NO2 here and here, but I encourage you to draw that on the exam in its full glory, as many instructors will really appreciate the fact that you actually know how the nitro group looks like. Jokes aside, but you have no idea how common this error is. For whatever reason, students just don't remember the structure of the nitro group. It's me, I have no idea why. All right, I'll stop complaining here and let's move to the next step. So, once we have our carbocation intermediate, the last step in this reaction is the aromaticity restoration via the proton transfer, like in the previous case again. And here we are going to be using the conjugate base left over from our sulfuric acid, which is going to be regenerating our catalyst H2SO4 over here and giving us the final product, which is nitrobenzene in this case. Nitration, by the way, is a very aggressive reaction, and we never want to perform it on a sensitive and a very complicated molecule. The nitric and sulfuric acids together can pretty much eat throughout just about anything, so many functional groups may be destroyed in this reaction if we are not careful. So next, we have the sulfonation reaction. And in this reaction, we are going to treat our aromatic molecule with a fuming sulfuric acid, which is the solution of SO3 in concentrated sulfuric acid. This mixture is a thick, viscous, yellow-brown liquid, and because of its consistency and because of how it looks like, it is sometimes called the oleum acid. 
the reaction results in a sulfonic acid, and interestingly, there are no co-products in this reaction, so don't accidentally draw water or anything like that as a co-product, because there are none. As always, we're going to start our mechanism with the electrophile formation, and in this case it's going to be the protonation of the SO3 by sulfuric acid. This gives us the electrophile that will then attack the aromatic ring. Again, here the SO3 by itself is just not strong enough to attack the aromatic ring, so we need to take it over the edge by protonating it. The electrophilic attack in this reaction gives us our typical carbocation intermediate. As this is already the third time we are seeing the same style intermediate in this tutorial, I am not going to show all the resonance structures, so try drawing them out and see if you can do it on your own. You can use the other two examples that we have already seen as the template for the resonance structures. So, finally, we are going to restore our aromaticity by removing the proton from our carbocation. In this reaction, we're again going to be using the sulfuric acid conjugate base for these purposes. And that yields us our final product, the sulfonic acid. And here is something really interesting about this reaction. It is actually reversible, unlike the previous two. This means that we can also remove the sulfonic acid group if we do this reaction in a dilute sulfuric acid solution. As a challenge, I encourage you to come up with the mechanism of this reaction on your own using all the same steps, but do them in the reverse order. And why is it important to know? Well, later in your course, you'll start talking more about the multi-step synthesis, and this reaction becomes a useful trick which you can use to temporarily block the position in the aromatic ring, do some other chemistry, and then remove the temporary block when you no longer need it. So it sort of acts as a protecting group for the position in the aromatic ring, so nothing else going to go there. Let's do a quick review of what we've just learned. If we treat an aromatic compound with a halogen, either a chlorine or a bromine, in the presence of the Lewis acid catalyst, such as the aluminum chloride, which we have already seen, or iron chloride, we are going to end up with the halogenation reaction. So we are going to replace one of the hydrogen on the aromatic ring with a chlorine or bromine correspondingly. If we treat an aromatic compound with a nitrating mixture, which is the mixture of concentrated nitric and sulfuric acids, we are going to get a nitrated aromatic compound, and we call this reaction the nitration. The treatment of aromatic compounds with the fuming sulfuric acid results in the sulfonation reaction, and I'm going to remind you here that that is a reversible reaction. So we can take the sulfuric acid group off, from our molecule when we no longer need it. Finally, we have the Friedel-Crafts alkylation and acylation reactions. I haven't talked about those two reactions in this video for a very good reason. They are much more complicated and have more extremely important details that we need to go over. So these reactions deserve their own video. So are you having fun with the aromatic chemistry so far? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, give it a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications so you don't miss any future tutorials and problem walkthroughs. You have yourself an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next video!